talk today about the importance of pricing profitably. And to start that, first we need to ask, what is price? Michelle, take over. All right, so let's first talk about what price isn't, okay? Price is not cost. It's not what the competition is charging. It's not how much effort you put into something or how much you spent advertising it. It's not how you feel about prices or how, how much you need to cover your monthly expenses. It's not even what your mother says it is. Boom. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Imagine you're dying of thirst in the desert and the nearest oasis is five miles away. A bottle of water costs $10 or even $100. Do you pay it? <gasps> yeah. You'd have to. In other words, price is actually determined by value. So let's talk about, if you, you know that if you've ever bought a pair of designer jeans, you know that people will pay a premium for something of high value. So price is simply and only, only the amount of money or other goods that a buyer is willing to give up to obtain what he or she wants, needs, or desires. So we have to keep that top of mind front and center as we're talking about price strategy. Here are some common ways that price is set. The first is called cost plus pricing. Cost plus pricing is where cost determines price. It's one of the most common ways to set pricing. If this cost me X, then I'm gonna mark it up Y and I'm gonna make this amount of money. Uh, another common practice is target return, which is very similar, which says I need to make a return of X so they work backwards to set price. And another way of setting price is competition based, based on what are other people in your field charging? Let me charge the same or even sometimes less, a little bit ooh, less. Undercuts all get undercut the so that I get the business and they don't. All of these price strategies are surefire ways to limit your profit because if you're pricing based on these things, then you're not pricing based on the value that you deliver to your buyer. Let's talk about value for a second. If you've ever purchased movie popcorn, then you've experienced value-based pricing. People are paying for the movie experience, mm -hmm. not for the mm -hmm. popcorn. And they're willing to pay three <laughs> times more, four times more for the popcorn in the theater as they are yes. if they were sitting in the Popcorn is, is worth maybe cents, you know? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. maybe 10 cents is the cost of the popcorn that you spend eight or nine dollars on at the theater. Yeah. So let's talk about the four P's of marketing. If you've ever gone to business school or taken a business class, then you've heard about the four P's of marketing. They are promotion, product, place, and price. Now the interesting thing about promotion, product, and place is they all cost you money. The only piece of the marketing mix that actually generates money is your price. So it's a very, very it's a key component of profitability for you. All right, moving right along. So are you starting to get how essential pricing is as a business strategy? Think of it this way. Every dollar that you can increase your prices after you've covered your costs is a dollar of profit in your pocket. Yeah, so tell them about, tell them about this. All right, so let's talk about the price value matrix. If you'll see on this, this matrix, there's a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. On the vertical axis is value, and on the horizontal the axis is price. So if you'll notice, things of high value, or low, let's call it about high value, low price, are things like, my, I'm going to use shoes as an example. Mm -hmm, great. So shoes, my Havayana flip-flops, they have high value to me because mm -hmm. I wear them all the time, but they didn't cost me much. They cost me like $15. So mm -hmm. that's high value, low price. Yep. Let's talk about Nike. They're, they're higher priced and higher value, right? So they land mm -hmm. there in the matrix. If you compare Christian Louboutins, which cost $700 a pair minimum, then we're talking about high price, high value. Betsy Johnson, my favorite brand, high price, high value. Guess, which is medium price, high-ish val high value. A pair of shoes that I bought for a Dave Matthews concert in a Walgreens. <laughs> low value, low price. I threw them away after the concert. So this gives you an idea of how things start to play out when you plot them out. Now. What I want you to notice is that over here in the first quadrant, this is called the profit quadrant. And the reason for that is that <clears throat> they have high price, high value. So they're very profitable and they're, it's known as a boutique model. You don't have to sell a lot of Christian Louboutin shoes or Betsy Johnson shoes or Mercedes Benz cars in order to make a profit. Over here in the second quadrant of the matrix, it's called the volume quadrant. And the reason for that is that you have to sell high volumes in order to make any money at all. Now, you can make money 
in the second quadrant. But chances are, if you're a small business owner, then you're going to be way too exhausted to ever produce or sell the kind of volume you'd need to to make a lot of money here. And then, of course, the third and the fourth quadrants, we just want to stay away from altogether. Altogether. Because you never want to be one of those people that's selling at high price with low value or low price, low value for that matter. So take it away. Havanitas, the favorite shoes. Havayana. Havayana, sorry. So yeah. that's how many Havayanas you'd have to sell to make up one of these pairs of shoes. So that can kind of put it into perspective for you when it comes to boutique model versus volume model. So what we're here to talk about is how to move your business into a boutique model. So the big problem here is that the business landscape is getting more and more competitive. There's no question. As things get cutthroat, your competitors will slash prices. If you compete on price, they will be stealing business from you left and right. If you're not freaked out about this, you should be. <laughs> so the question is, if price is a reflection of value, then how can you raise the perception of value for you? 